This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Hi friends. Good evening. So in our today session, we are going to see how you can copy data from SQL database to blob storage. Blob storage storage by using ADM. So this is the requirement. Okay, this is our requirement. So now we understood why we need to move the data or why we need to copy okay copy data from sql database to the blob storage so how you are going to get the data into the database so we have already seen by using web applications we are going to enter our data this data will be inserted into the sql database tables so meaning in sql database we will have a tables okay we will have tables in sql database in these in those tables we will have a our actual data okay our data will be there in these tables right so now we we understood the importance of the data and how we are collecting this data these two informations we already collected right now why we need to move this data from sql database to the blob store is also yesterday we have seen so in sql database table if your data is showing some 1000 mb if you are moving this entire data into the blob storage in a some there are different formats friends example i am considering parquet format if you move all the data which you have in this table the data size is let's imagine 1000 mb this data if you move it into the blob storage in a parquet format the size of the data will reduce up to 60 percent okay reduction okay so if you reduce the 60 percent data size the size of the data is going to be 400 mb only in the blob storage okay so the advantage if you convert this table data into the file formats is you can process this data very quickly okay so the processing time will reduce you will get a better performance okay fine now how you are going to copy data from the sql database to the blob storage see what is meant by processing all those things we have seen right processing Malay, is basically i have a question yes so when you said parquet format and other mm -hmm. formats also we have uh, yes. is it is it there uh, we see any difference between the formats and yes, why yes, we have to go for parquet format only that we will cover friends so we are okay. initial stage so okay. because every day i am just discussing theory part so right. today we need to start with the lab at least today we need to start okay, okay. Right, so right. daily we will lay, uh, like we will discuss one by one so surely sure. we are going to discuss that okay so Thank but you. i told mostly we will go with the parquet because there are so there are some advantages okay, okay. Right. there are some advantages that we are going to discuss anyhow okay. thank you now yeah no problem so you have a now let me just open paint so we should not discuss much theory from today everything should be lab okay. so today what we are thinking so we have a database in database okay next we will have a blob storage okay database we have blob storage we have in database here let's imagine this is a sql database let's imagine this is blob storage so this is SQL database. This is blob storage. Now I want to move data from SQL database to the blob storage. So how the how you are going to store data in the database with the help of tables. How to create the tables? As we discussed yesterday, whenever you are creating table, you are going to define the structure for the table. Let's imagine if you remember yesterday, I have. okay i think i removed it but let me show you again so create okay table candidates whoever is joining okay candidates so now i want to take some information about Malay. candidate so yes your yes. voice is breaking my voice is breaking today for me I it is okay i think issue from your end friends so today i have a good in network so rest of the people, everybody is fine, friends. Sam, good. Okay. Yes, yes, Malaya, good. Okay, right, right. So just check, friends, whoever has the issue. Okay, because today I changed my network, so it should be fine from today. Right. So create table candidate. So candidate is my table name. 
whenever you are inserting some data into this table you need to define the schema what is meant by schema is let's say whenever you are thinking to store some some information about candidate you need to have some idea what information you want about the candidate example candidate name i want okay candidate contact number i want okay contact number next i want to understand candidate location okay so these three information i want yesterday as i said friends the main data types in sql database is you need to consider there are mainly three three data types we are going to use regularly there are multiple data types still okay so those regularly used data types i will discuss now whenever you are thinking to take a names in particular column that that particular column you have to define with where cat okay whenever you are thinking to take a some number maybe customer contact number so if the number is less than 9 digit it should be int if the number is greater than 9 digits let's say your phone number is 10 digit then you have to go with the big int it's a big more than 9 digits finally if you are taking anything date then you have a date if you want to take anything in a date and time then you have to say date and time, date time so these are the main data types we are going to use whenever you are considering the where care where care is nothing but a names example it may be candidate name candidate location also one name maybe maybe in bangalore or chennai okay that is also name so company name okay so maybe president name something okay institute name so these all are the names whenever you are defining the name you also need to specify your how many characters you want to accept if you see your customer name oh, sorry candidate name so candidate name maybe you want to yellow the candidate name up to 50 characters okay what it means example if i am yellowing five characters means you can store up to rama krishna suppose if i want to store i cannot store because where care of five means i can able to store only five characters if you want to store complete information krishna rama krishna complete information we have to specify more digits here where care 50 something like that you need to define friends okay now you are clear right so with that with those details now we need to create the table how to create table create table candidate so it's a name where care where care 50 next contact number it's a phone number big int next c location this is also again name name of the location so i need to give some some number so i am just considering 50 but in real time uh, your uh, business team is going to tell okay what is the size of uh, this particular column what is the size of this particular column if you consider address address means in that column you are going to put lot of information your street or street name and your whatever it may be your city next your state country and your pin number all those things you are going to put it right so in those cases you need to increase the this number okay now you have defined the structure once you define the structure let's say now i want to put some information candidate name okay here i will put something mohan okay next is name number let's say i will give my number here phone number okay next if you see location it's a let's put something bangalore he is in bangalore so this is my first candidate let's come back here so next i want to give some other name okay so let's give something shiva okay uh, here i will give some name again okay so here chennai he is in chennai something okay start candidate suppose something you put anil okay so here is phone number i will enter something dummy number okay next here you need to say he is in hyderabad okay hyderabad okay so these three records these three records i have okay these three records if i want to insert into this table you simply you have to say insert into candidate table candidate table what are the values these are the values that's all so if you execute this command you are going to insert these three records into this table if you execute this command you are going to create the table okay this table is going to have these three columns c name c contact and c location okay clear friends so so now you need to understand here see first thing is i will create a sql database because 
we need to store some data in the database that's why i will create a database then i will create the table in that table i will insert the some records clear friends what i am going to do with respect to this side source side i am going to create a sql database okay next once i create a sql database i will create table i will connect to the sql database and i will create table then i will insert data into table so these three things i will do with respect to the database side now if you come to blob storage side so now i need to define where exactly i want to store this table information whatever data i have in this table where exactly you want to store it in the blob storage so storage means it's not a table right so one file can have three columns another file can have 10 columns so for each each file you can change right so in the same way for each table the number of columns you can change you can create one more table saying that uh, uh, who got job okay something create table uh, job okay something job table name is job and you can put some information in that the table you may have a different number of columns in the same way now i have this information whatever data i have in this table i want to move it into the blob storage when you are moving into the blob storage in blob storage you can create the folders let's say here i can say blob output okay or you can say candidate data so the folder name here i will create is candidate okay first thing is create blob, blob storage okay create blob storage then i will create the folder inside okay so folder name let's say candidate data c data c data is the my folder name okay friends so c data is going to be my folder name in this folder i want to load the data which i have in this table as a parquet format okay as a parquet format whatever data i have in this table i want to load it into c data now to do this particular requirement to fulfill this requirement what you are going to use is you are going to use a service called azure data factory what is the service you are going to use azure data factory yesterday i have explained you friends what exactly azure data factory is right so azure data factory is a kind of a delivery manager azure data factory is not going to do anything who is going to do actual things there is a something called integration runtime runtime inside your azure data factory integration runtime is going to do the actual things for you okay azure data factory is a just a kind of a manager who will manage all the things what all what all things you can do by using azure data factory you can move the data from one place to the another place here if you see in this particular case we are moving data from database to the blob storage next what you can do you can move data from blob storage to the sql database from sql database to the sql data or sql database to the cosmos db okay sql database to the data lake storage blob storage to the data lake storage so you can move data from here and there anything is possible okay how you are going to do by using azure data factory okay one thing next you, once the data is available in the blob storage you are going to read these files and you will process it process it means you will uh, you will derive extra columns okay if at all the data has some duplicate records you are going to remove those duplicate records okay everything you are going to do that is called a processing why we need to do processing we need to understand business okay so whom to offer the discounts okay so which products are going to expire soon so on those products you need to provide a more discount so something if you want to grow in your business you need to understand data for that we are moving the data which we have in this table into the blob storage once we have moved this data from database to the blob storage from blob storage again i will read it into data bricks okay let me just note down those computational services also one of the services data bricks next hd insight adla or machine learning so you can use any of these things for processing your data so we are going to see these four things okay in our training we are going to see these four things how you are going to how you are going to use these four things to read data from blob storage and process the data finally how you can store that output data back to the blob storage so these all things we are going to see today and uh, not today so in our uh, training one by one we are going to see but in our today session we are trying to move data from sql database to the blob storage okay now we are clear so first thing is first step step one is we need to create a sql database then table insert some data into table second step is create a blob storage 
and create folder inside this blob storage now come to data factory how data factory is going to do actually is so as we discussed yesterday if you want to move some things from one house to the another house first you need to connect right you need to connect it to this particular house meaning you need to unlock this house you need to enter into this house okay so that is nothing but a this is uh, first thing is a linked service you need to create linked service is basically one of the service within the azure data factory which will allow you to create the connections okay so same service you are going to use to connect to the blob storage as well okay blob storage also if you want to connect same thing that is linked service i am going to use linked service that's clear see if you want to connect to the database or blob storage or data lake storage or data bricks whatever you want to connect you are going to use a service called linked service linked service is nothing but a connection okay okay now i have connected to the database now what i wanted to in a database you may have a hundred of tables but i don't want to move all the tables i just wanted to pick one table i just wanted to pick one table to pick one table there is a one more service called data set not only one table but if you want to select what exactly data you want the data selection you are going to do by using a something called data set okay now you selected this data but this data i want to load it into this folder even here also you are selecting folder you may have a multiple folders but here you are selecting the folder as you are selecting the folder this is also you are going to do it by using data set okay now you have connected to table database and you selected the table whatever table you want here also connected to the blob storage and you selected the folder inside this blob storage now what you wanted to do i want to move the data from i want to move data from data set whatever data i have in this data set that data i want to move it into this data set so this is nothing but a copy so you need to you need to define the something called activity activity is nothing but exactly what you want to do so do you want to just copy or do you want to delete so i want to copy data so you need to use something called copy activity copy data activity so copy data activity you need to select clear friends okay clear clear okay so this entire process you need to follow within a something called pipeline okay this entire thing will be there inside pipeline okay don't worry so let's do the lab so that you will get a some idea friends okay let's not uh, focus only on theory because if i keep explaining theory you will not understand if you are still in confusion you will be there in the confusion only if i do lab then only you can able to understand okay let me open this white box just as you know you need to click on portal.azure.com okay here you can see cloud pandit at the red gmail.com click on that okay it is asking me to enter password as i entered click sign in okay i am logging in okay so i am here so as i explained yesterday friends whenever i am <coughs> sorry sorry so whenever i am doing lab basically what i will do is i will open number of tabs based on number of resources i am using how many resources i am going to use in this particular lab so i am going to use one of the services database one of the services data factory third services blob storage okay let's go back <coughs> first thing is so i opened one tab for the database let's open duplicate tab so this tab for the adf let's click on one more duplicate tab this is for the blob storage what you need to do like this because if you want to move from here and there right so it will be very difficult first i will create database then you will click on blob storage all these things if i do here itself it will be difficult so now i log in into my a portal now i will search here sql database you can see here sql database is ready right just click on sql databases okay. then click add 
add click on add to create the database okay so here if you see subscription is free trial okay subscription is free trial resource group is as you already seen right when we are creating uh, our virtual machine we have seen what is resource group resource group is nothing but a logical grouping of the uh, services okay let's say currently i have i need to create database adf block storage i want to group all these three services into single service single group how you can make those three services into single group by using resource group let's create create new this one i can say a so cloud and adf lab one area of lab one click ok so this is the my resource group come down you need to provide the database name database is nothing but a where you are going to store your data so let's say here my database name i can say sql database okay then today date you can give today date is 0705 okay, this is my database name now what is server server is nothing but a, let's say if you see if you go to any hotel right food will be there in a kitchen but are you going will you go inside kitchen to get the food no right you are going to make a request to the server so servant will go will come and take the request based on your request you will go to the kitchen and pick the requested item in the same way here in database all the data database objects will be there meaning all your data will be there so what data you want exactly that particular data will be picked by your server so whatever queries you are writing those queries will be submitted to the server you are going to uh, tell to the server server will take this request it will go to the database from the database it will give you the data okay we need to create this server as well okay click on create new to create the server here i need to give the server the sql server today date 0705 so as i said right so somebody already used this one i think so let's say something something unique what you can do just put one okay so now if you come here as i said right whenever you are submitting a queries you are going to submit queries directly to the server so as you are going to talk to the server directly when you are talking to the server you need to check whether we have a proper permissions or not that's why we need to set the username and password for this server so whoever is using this exact username and password they can able to interact with this server okay this is open and this is just password. okay i'm reconfirming password then you can select in which in which data center you want to launch this server so in east us you click ok click ok okay so if you come down you can see here want to use sql elastic pool so elastic pool means let's say you have 100 uh, 100 percent capacity now i want to i want to assign 50 percent capacity dedicated to some jobs then you need to go to the elastic pool and you have to define so 50 percent of the resources always i want to use for this particular job so remaining things i want to use for this particular job if you want to do you have to go for this option but let me keep that one as it is a default option no i don't want to assign this these many job resources for this job these many resources for this job i don't want to assign so that's why click no then compute plus storage so what is your database size you want okay click on configure database here you can see if you want to reduce your database size or increase your database size the computation dtu okay database throughput units dtu is nothing but a database throughput units based on this dtus you will get the better performance your query performance will increase but i am just using very small dtus because it is very costly friends if you increase there will be the cost will increase okay that's why let it be just i will keep as this click apply 250 gb storage 10 data data throughput units okay, database throughput units i'm taking let's not click on networking all those things okay these all things are yeah if you want to see you can see here you no need to worry okay if you want to use any url something if you want firewall more security then you need to put your database within the vpn all those things you need to worry but right now i don't want to use any networking things come to additional settings here basically what happens use existing data none means 
you will get the empty database if you click on backup if you have already taken some backup from some other database that backup data you need to attach it here sample is nothing but a by default when your database is created microsoft will provide some data with a with a name called adventure works lt okay with this name there will be some data already available some tables will be there data will be there in those tables if you want some data for your practice you can go with the sample but i don't want anything click now so collation is nothing but how your data has to be shorted and stored in a efficient way this is always we will use the default one even in the real time click tax tax is a just a key value page let's say created by so created by cloud pandit okay environment so for which environment this is a development environment so something like that one second okay friends so this key value pairs you need to use here okay key value pairs you have to use then click review plus create see here you can see so estimated cost per month is 991 rupees i know so that's why you should not keep this databases all these things as it is okay always once your work is done you can delete it okay just click on create so now we have completed our first part that is creation of the database is completed okay see here you need to do three steps but currently we have completed first step once the database is ready then only you can create table and insert the data okay so we need to wait some time meanwhile let's not waste time go to second tab and let's create the blob storage okay come back go to second tab here i will create the blob storage how to create blob storage storage is nothing but your data will be there in any format that i will show you click on story storage accounts okay so if you want to create a blob storage you need to click on storage accounts free storage accounts okay so just click on that you will come here only you are here now if you want to create any blob storage click on add see in your real time you no need to create all these things if as a developer you have to use all the existing services who will create all these things admin infra team will create all these things but as this is training we need to start we need to create everything from scratch we are learning all these things okay so next so as i said friends all these three services i will group it into one group so for that i already created one group into that group i will attach see i am saying i am selecting same resource group so that this database this blob storage this adf everything will be there in the same resource group come down so here you need to give the your data uh, blob storage name i can say blob storage today date i will give 0705 okay next here in which region you want east to west to wherever you want so you can select okay there will be multiple regions wherever you want you can select it next so which performance you want standard or premium premium means let's say do you have premium account so premium is always costly and you will get a better performance next in blob storage friends see here v1 v2 and blob storage there are three options blob storage is nothing but you will get only blob storage okay so blob storage means some storage you will get it's a limited storage some five terabytes of data you can store but if you go with v1 and v2 you will get a tables queues file share so file store so there are different options will be enabled automatically because these are the recent upgrades recent uh, releases okay but let's go with the blob storage today tomorrow we will go with the other things click on blob storage okay come down so once you click on blob storage see a replication replication means copying of the data so whatever data you have in this blob storage you may lose one copy if you lost one copy if you lose one copy you should have another copy ready right so cloud is going to enable you to maintain as many copies as you want based on the criticality of the data so if you think the data is very critical you should not lose at any point in time you need to use the different options see local redundance geo redundance read access geo redundance local redundance storage is nothing but a let's come here one second click on pay okay here see friends first option is one second first option is local redundant storage lrs okay come back 
LRS is nothing but a come here, see. So you, are, you have a data center. In data center, you are going to maintain two copies, okay? One copy, you may have a, see, different uh, containers will be there here inside data center, okay? Different uh, containers, okay? What you are going to do, you will store one copy of data here, one copy of data here. So in same data center, if this is, if you lose this, you will have a, another copy here. Okay, likewise, we'll have total three copies, three copies, okay? Even if you lose this one also, you'll have a, another copy here, okay? At a time, even if you lose two copies, you'll have a, one more copy. This is called local redundant storage. In same data center, you are going to maintain three different copies, okay? Next, we have a geo redundant storage. Geo redundant storage is nothing but a, so let me tell you click new don't save see geo redundance means this data center is there in india this data center is there in us now what i am going to do i will maintain one copy in india data center another copy in us data center now what happens if you lose this copy you will still have another copy which you are storing which you have stored in the us data center right so likewise maybe one more copy will be there in uk one more copy may be there in uk so likewise every time you will have a three copies one copy in india one copy in us one copy in uk so likewise every time you will have a three copies even if you lose data in two data center you will have a one more copy okay remember next so if you go if you select this other options right you will have a more things see zone redundancy zone redundance let me tell you what is the zone redundance zone redundance is nothing but a click here click new so maybe in same in within india we, you have a multiple data centers right within india you have a different uh, data centers so one copy will be there here one copy will be there see local means in same data center you will have multiple copies zone means within a country uh, in different uh, data centers you will have the data geo means geographical way in different countries you will have a copy of data one copy will be there in india another copy will be there in us something like that okay clear friends now you need to understand one more thing called read access geo redundant storage what it means is read access okay only first day i'm going to explain all these things okay from tomorrow even i will create quickly quickly okay see here so geo redundance means this is in india okay this is in us let's imagine now what happens this is within india this is in, in us let's imagine now what you are saying whatever data i am storing in india data center same copy i am storing in a us data center why you are doing this for the replication for the safe safety for high availability even if you lose this data, you should have this data. That's why you are storing uh, one more copy in the US data center. Now, the question you need to understand is read access geo redundant storage, meaning you need to give the read access for the data which you are stored in the geographical way. So, meaning whatever data you are storing in data center, India data center, this will be read and modified, everything will happen. But whatever data you have in uh, US data center, this data will not be will not be readable previously if you go with the read access storage. Okay, just you are maintaining another copy for the safe safety. Okay. But if you go with the read access geo readings, what it means is this data also can be readable. Meaning, let's say all the people who are in India, they will access this copy. Whoever is there in US, they will access this data. That's all, friends. Very simple. Okay. Now let's go with the local readings because we don't record all those things access tier access tier is nothing but you need to tell whether you are going to access the data which you have in this storage very frequently if you are going to access data which in, which is there in this block storage very frequently then you have to select art if you are going to access the data which you have in this block storage very rarely then you have to click on pool so based on this option your back end system will be decided okay so whether you want fast retrieval or slow retrieval, all those things will be decided based on this. Hot means frequent access. Pool means infrequent access. Click networking. So I don't want to use networking. Advanced. So if you want more security, see security is enabled. Data protection. If somebody deleted, so how many more days I want to keep this data? 
somebody deleted due to some reason and after two days he realized that whatever data i deleted that i want to retain back so last seven days data if you want to retain back then you can enable these options so likewise we'll have a some more options this data lake storage gen 2 we will talk about this when we are learning data lake storage okay so data lake storage and block storage there are two storages in the azure if it is aws we have only one storage that is s3 simple storage service in azure we have two storages block storage and data lake storage so right now we are going with the block storage but in few labs after few labs we will see data lake storage click tags tags we already discussed key value pair right now i am not using click review plus create okay, it will be validated all the details yes validation passed click create so now we have created the blob storage as well okay so now come back to paint yeah okay so if you see your if you see your friends we have a blob storage we have blob, uh, sorry sql database blob storage we have created okay now what we need to do third thing azure data factory we need to create right so let's go to the third tab and we will create the database data factory click on data factories click add to create the data factory okay, here i can see adf 0705 okay version 2 i am oh, okay so the difference between version one and version two is version one is you need to write the code version two is you don't need to write the code code will be generated in the back end you just have to drag and drop okay drag and drop that we are going to see today and the next thing you don't need to worry already v1 is decommissioned okay whoever is already implemented adf pipelines in v1 they have to upgrade to the v2 now because v1 is no more valid already support is removed from the microsoft itself they already uh, telling to the customer saying that if you have already developed your azure data factory pipelines in v1 upgrade to the v2 they are telling since last two years many companies many people already upgraded to the v2 so that's why we are going to learn only v2 v1 is no more valid okay, click v2 so subscription we know resource group c i am grouping this particular service also into same group now in which location you want to launch i want to launch this one in this particular region next do you whatever code is generating from uh, this data factory that code if you want to directly deploy into the azure devops you have to enable so in git where do you want to put this code and all but currently i don't want to enable this this button i will enable when we are discussing azure devops okay for now click create okay any doubts as of now Everybody is clear, friends. We created database, blob storage, ADF. Okay, so let me just note down here. We created as of now SQL database. Second is blob storage. Okay. Third one is we created Azure Data Factory. Now come to SQL database here. See in SQL database side, what you need to do next step is table you need to create. Once you create table. Once you create table, you need to insert data into this table. Okay, these two steps we will do now. Okay, let's go back to here. Our first tab, we have a database. Click and go to see your deployment is completed, meaning your database is created. So if you remember on-premise, what you need to do? You need to download that particular database, click on install, install, install. If at all any error come, you need to take and create everything here. You are just, you have filled all your requirements. This much data size I want uh, with this much data size database I want in this data center I want to launch all those requirements we have submitted. Now database is ready. Click on go to resource. Click on query editor. Okay. See query editor is basically to connect to the database. So now if I try to enter my password, it will throw error. I will tell you why it is going to throw error how to resolve that we are going to see click ok see it is saying cannot open server this one requested by login client ip with address 27 15 and 164 so whatever network internet i have connected that network ip address you need to allow then only the database will allow you to connect to the database because many people will try to connect to the database you should not allow anybody to connect to the database so that's why you need to tell 
whom you have to yellow, whom you should not yellow. There will be some walls, firewalls you are going to use to control the access. That's why click on overview, click on set server firewall. Okay, so here you need to say click add client type. See, when I click on this, the IP address will add it here. See, click on this, see, IP address added. Okay, next. Now, into this database, I want to connect to database from Azure Data Factory. That's why you have to say yellow Azure services and resources to access the server. Yes, I want to yellow other Azure services to connect to the database. I want to search, uh, like I want to enable S. Yes. Click save. These changes I want to save. Okay, you saved these changes. Come back. Now click on query editor. Here you can enter your password. See, in our real time, we are not going to connect to the database like that. We are going to use something called SSMS2 that we are going to see one by one. Okay. So now today we are connecting to the database like this. Okay. Sometimes we will connect. Okay. Even in real time, but this is one of the option. But in most of the time, we will use a SQL Server Management Studio. There is a tool that tool how to install all those things. Also, we will see. Okay. Now I am here. If we expand here and check whether you have any tables, see there is no tables. Now come to Notepad. Here you can see the query to create the table. Take this, put it here, run it. Query succeeded. Affected rows zero. Affected rows zero means there is no data changed in this table. That's why affected row. Row means one one horizontal line, right? So you you need to think like. So there is no data changed in this table. Now table is created. If you refresh this and if you expand this table list, you can see candidate. If you expand this further, you can see the number of columns we have. C name, C contact, C location. Now I want to insert some data. Before I insert, I want to see what is the data you have. So from which table you want to see the data candidate. So from this table, whatever data I have, I want to see. How you will see? I want to select all the data. If you want to select all, select star. So I want to use select star means I want to select all the data from candidate table. Click run. See what it is saying. So the spelling of the candidate is wrong. I think check it once. Candidate is oh. So you should not select one line. See I select only this right. You should not select one line. You have to select enter query and run. See now it is saying affected rows zero. There is no data available. So this is the query you need to use if you want to check whether you have any data in this table or not. So we have verified here zero records. It is saying see affected rows zero. It is saying now I will insert these three records. Insert into this table. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's go back to query data. Let me enter here password. Here, let me put it. Click run. See, now I am inserting data. So, what it is saying? Affected rows three. So, because one row, second row, and third row. Total three rows we have inserted. That's why it is saying affected rows is three. Okay. Now I will remove this. I want to check it again. What is the data I have in this table? Now take same query and put it and run it. So what it is saying, friends? So it is saying there are these three records we have. Okay, C name, C contact, C location. Okay, so these three data you have right clear. So now we we managed to insert data in the table and we have some data in the database. This data I want to move it into the blob storage. For that, I created the blob storage. Now I need to create the folder inside blob storage. Let's go to the second tab. Let's go to the second tab. Go to resource to go inside blob storage. Okay, let's come down here. You can see containers go inside container. See, click on container. Container is nothing but a kind of a folder. So I'm going to see here C data, candidate data. My folder name is C data. Click create. Okay, very simple. C data folder created. So inside this, I want to load whatever data I have in that candidate table. See, currently you don't have any data here. Okay, so now you have completed. Now you have completed this second step as well. Now I need to open our data factory to move data from database to the blob storage. Sorry, I'm just doing all these things just for your understanding. Okay. So now 
Malay, I have one question. Yeah, Mohan, tell me what, what is your question. So let me know, friends, if you have any questions now. So please ask me quickly so that we, we need to continue. If we need to complete the lab. Hello, Mohan, are you there? don't think anybody have any question friends are you able to hear me hello hello yes, no yes, i yes. don't have any question yes, yes malaya yeah yeah we can able to hear right yeah nobody is responding i thought uh, audio is not okay right so come here go to thought tab click on go to resource now you are going into the data factory Remember, data factory is not available directly here. You need to click on author and monitor so that there is a separate URL will be opened. That is adf.edu.com. See here, portal.edu.com. If you see URL, portal.edu.com. This is portal.edu.com. So now if you want to open ADF, click on author and monitor. It will open in a different window with another URL. See, adf.edu.com. This URL is totally different. Okay. So now we are opening data factory. Okay, in data factory, we need to understand what are the main components, main components in ADF. Can you tell me from here, what are the main components that you understood from here? So one is linked service, okay? Next, data sets. Third one is activity, fourth one is pipeline. Clear, right? So one is linked service. Why you need linked service? For connection. So once you connect, we need to select what data I want. That selection of data you're going to do it by using data set. Selection of data. Selection of data. Third one is your actual task. Task is nothing but a like a task or activity. Activity, what you want to do, activity. Okay. So exit task multiple tasks you are going to do in a single time so if you want to do multiple activities in single time you need to use a pipeline pipeline is nothing but a group of activities or tasks okay clear friends now this is clear right next we need to understand what is integration and time this is the server integration and time this is the server which is going to copy your actual data. ADF is a kind of a just manager. Inside ADF, you will have all these services, all these components. Then you will also have an integration runtime. So how many different types of integration runtimes we have? One is self-hosted IR. Self-hosted IR you are going to use when you want to move data from on-premise to cloud. So example, I have some data in my local laptop. That data, I want to move it into the data center. Then you have to use a self-hosted IR. This we need to install it. We will see how to install. Next type is Azure IR. Okay. Azure IR. Azure IR, when you want to move data within the cloud to cloud. So in our today session, what we are doing, we are moving data from database to the blocks to the both are in the cloud. So that's why we need to use Azure IR today. Finally, we have something SSIS IR. SSIS IR is nothing but when you want to execute SSIS packages from ADF, you need to use this. Now, so there is a something called auto resolve IR. Auto resolve IR. So people will try to confuse you. Don't confuse friends. Okay, don't confuse. Auto resolve IR is nothing but a default IR that you will get when you create the ADF. When you create ADF, default you will get the auto resolve ir what is meant by auto resolve ir is this is nothing but a, this one okay azure type only now with this explanation we know that we opened our data factory we should be able to see this ir we should be able to see these components we will go and explore those things from here so here i am click on author there is a second tab called author click on that see here click on connections if you go to connection see linker service this is the first component okay next data sets see data sets pipeline if you create a pipeline here click new pipeline you will be able to see activities 
okay now let me disconnect discord talk i don't want to save anything right now empty again we came back now you can see integration and then see auto resolve integration and what is the type here type you can see azure type integration and type. so by using this particular ir we are going to move data from the database to the blob storage now as i said you need to come here and you need let me just close this this is very confusing okay see here first thing is we need to use the linked service to connect to the sql database how to create linked service say so come back click on connections click on linked services click new so see so many services you can connect these are all services you can connect in azure data factor but currently i want to connect to the sql database search here sql so this is my database i want to connect click on it. click continue you can see a name name of your sql connection as i said if you want to fetch some data from the database you need some server that is auto resolve integration and type okay next i want to identify my server from my subscription in this subscription i have a my database what is your server name this is server name what is your database this is database if you remember okay we have created with today date and month 0705 then now we thought we got error saying that this server is already exist existed that's why we added one okay so this is the server this is the database now i want to connect so that's why i have given some username and password when i am creating server same username and password i need to enter in real time we are not going to enter our username and password directly like that there is something called azure key vault it's a managed service this username and password will be encrypted and stored in the key vault that part we will discuss click test connection you can test the connection whether you are able to connect to the database successfully or not see successful just click create okay so now you are done with this linked service now i want to create one more linked service which which i am going to use to connect to the blob storage come here click new click blob storage click continue okay this is blob connection so come down so this is going to be integration runtime we know server account key from subscription this is the subscription this is the storage which i have created see so if you remember see let me just show you let me select free drive see when i'm selecting the storage there will be a loading key key will be loaded automatically you can test the connection now connection successful just click three. so now you have connected to the sql database in the same way you have connected to the blob storage now click on data sets okay let's go here and see so you connected to this database connected to the blob storage now once you connect to the database you need to fetch some data I will fetch data by using data set click on new data set click new data set so from which database you want to fetch the data sql database click continue. so this is my sql data set i can give the name sql data set if you want to see data you have to tell you have already connected successfully that is nothing but a linker service let's select linker service so this is the here it will display all the table names once you connect to the database it will display all the table names what are the tables available only candidate table is available click on this candidate table okay whatever table you have that one table you select don't worry how you will select multiple tables everything will be covered one by one okay for today one table i selected click okay okay i selected what data i want to fetch from the database now i need to create one more data set to tell where you want to load the data which you read this side where you want to load this side so for that you need to create one more data set click here click new data set blob storage click continue so see here blob storage will support all these formats parquet csv json avro orc binary okay we will talk about all these things later but as i said right parquet is the very famous but it's a serialized serialized means this data you cannot read right you cannot read that's why let's not select a park let's go with the csv okay click continue so this is basically blob data set data set click on linked service so you need to connect to the linked service if it wants to show any 
storage or uh, like folder see here click browse to see see this is the folder we have created in the block student c data click ok then first row has headers so first row is header means in the candidate table you have you will have a headers right it's candidate name candidate contact number candidate location those are the your headers if you want to copy those headers also click ok okay now if you want to define the schema schema is nothing but what is the data type of each column then you have to import schema there is no use currently if you import or if you're not importing there won't be any impact click ok okay now you selected what data to fetch once you fetch this data where to load but what you want to do with this data and this the, this folder so for that you need to create a pipeline to define what to do you need to create a pipeline i created a pipeline then it is saying what all things you want to do you can connect to the data breaks you can connect to the data analytics you can connect to the machine learning services hd insights spark cluster different clusters you can connect general services will have okay if you want to call azure functions you can call if you want to copy just copy the data you can use these okay currently i just wanted to copy the data just to drag this activity here okay so when you drag it it will ask from where to where you want to copy data source is my sql data set see in, in this data set i have my table data i want to preview before i copy i want to check whether i am getting correct data or not see this is the data you are trying to copy fine next come to sync data set select where do you want to load into block data set in this block data set you have selected the folder okay now click on publish all it's nothing but a saving the changes click publish okay so this pipeline you can also schedule it schedule saying that i want to run this pipeline at two o'clock three o'clock ist four o'clock ist everything you can define it okay it is saved now go back to your block storage refresh it there is no data available here okay now come back to your adf pipeline now i want to run this pipeline how to run there is something called add trigger click on add trigger click trigger now then click ok so where to monitor pipeline execution there is a thought tab called monitor click on monitor refresh it so it will take some time to refresh but by now it might have already completed okay, sometimes it will be it will take more time to refresh and come okay so pipeline if it is not showing here don't worry go back to the blob storage refresh it file should come here see file came okay click on this click edit you can see comma separated when well. see headers also copied whatever data you have that data also came here clear friends now go to data factory refresh it and check okay see it came now it will it is just taking some time okay so once it comes click on this pipeline to go inside what has happened okay see this is the copy activity executed okay if you want to know more details click on this details so you have moved data from sql database to the blob storage so there are three records you read three records you have written okay so how much time it took just two seconds okay so whether status is succeeded or not succeeded activity run id what is the run id if you want to identify this run id how to identify this is the run ID. okay so this is how you can able to copy data from sql database to the blob storage okay this is the simple example friends from today you need to practice the things because every day what happens is we are going to add the activities keep on adding the activities there will be a dependency there will be a dependency that's why you need to start practicing from today if you are if you practice today's session it will be easy for you to understand tomorrow's session because everything will be dependency today we have done with the simple selection of a table tomorrow we will execute some queries i don't want to copy entire table data i want to copy maybe one record based on some condition maybe i want to select only two columns customer name and a customer location sorry candidate name and candidate location so something like that based on requirement you need to copy so after that we will see multiple tables how to copy
okay once you copy data how to fetch some audit information whether whatever data i have in source head whatever data i send in source head whether everything came to the target or not if you want to verify you need to fetch some audit how to fetch audit how to uh, how to implement a pipeline to fetch uh, incremental data so all those are the labs and then or i mentioned in our lab and then <laughs> what's in there Sorry, sorry, Malaya. Sorry. Okay, right. Okay, any questions, friends? Who is NJ? Okay, let me just be in the call, friends. Uh, 